as the Dalai Lama says, the show must go on. Ah, uh, yeah, you cock a snook at bad news, don't you? I, I do, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm a snook cocker. I'm sure there's an anagram in there somewhere. What? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Just, I'm just saying, I'm sure there's an anagram in there somewhere. Oh. Doesn't matter. Press on. Introduce your next guest. Calling me that? Not an anagram. Simon Denton there. Funny Simon Denton. Yes. What's fascinating about history is that, unlike bread in a bakery or love in a marriage, it's never going to run out. <laughs> But military history is a genre all of its own. A new series promises to shed light on battlefield ingenuity and we'll be talking to its presenter, Sam Chatwin, very shortly. Hello. Shortly. But first, since military history is a subject close to my heart, I thought I'd don my wellies and shed a bit of light on one of my favourite battles. Let's take a look at my report. A simple stream in North Walsham, Norfolk. But six centuries ago, this stream would have flowed with the blood and entrails of fallen men. I was hoping to illustrate it by pouring in this bucket of butcher's waste. But some Dilbert at the council seems to think it would contaminate the water supply. So close your eyes instead and imagine bits of dead men bobbing about in red water. This was the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, caused, some say, by underpaying the workers. But there's compelling evidence that low wages actually increases productivity. As Kirsty Allsop says, a well-fed dog is a slow dog. Whatever the pros and cons, there can be no excuse for the peasants' antisocial behaviour. The execution of their ringleaders serving as a timely reminder that laws are there for a reason. Behind me is North Walsham Heath. What today is a pleasant place to rest was once a peasant place of rest, since many of them lay dying here. You see, razzed up on scrumpy and injustice, they brought to the battle only guts and aggression. And as anyone who's played squash against Adrian Childs will tell you, guts and aggression are no match for skill and tactics, unless his opponents had a big breakfast. The battle was bloody. After the first day, the bishop's men set up camp here on the heath, a place for the pooped troops to regroup and recoup. They would have discussed the tactics with the free hot meal included. There were potatoes in those days, of course, they hadn't been developed. It was simply lamb shank or the classic chicken. In contrast, one can picture the peasants loaded on cider, weeing into bushes, telling disgusting jokes before attacking the bishop's men in dawn raids. But their lack of organisation meant they were no match for the deft sorcerership and combat nurse of a trained unit. <laughs> the labourers were serfs, their hands more used to drawing milk from a goat teat than wielding a sword. The trained soldiers knew to have one hand on the hilt, the other on the pommel. That is what I do. I've got kids! God forgive me. The battle continued. The bishop's men fighting off futile frenzy and sometimes rubbish attacks from the peasants. The battle continued till dusk. of the rebels dispatched had a bloody defeat that could have been avoided if the peasants had simply raised their concerns through the correct channels. A sobering reminder that war, be it the First World War, the Second World War, or the Great War of China, always takes a heavy toll. We've been fighting. And I was the winner. 